All right, good evening. Uh, welcome to everyone joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom. Uh, tonight is the start of our Meet the CEO series. My name is Albert Lay. I'm with the Office of, of Communications. Uh, before we begin tonight, I am going to briefly review some of the Zoom uh, functionalities, uh, its audio settings, and how to ask questions for tonight's meeting on the questions and answers segment. Give me a moment here as I share my screen. All right. Okay, so right now you are viewing our tonight's meeting via uh, Zoom webinar. Um, most of you are able to hear us by now, but if you're in an area with issues with your internet service, you can also call in using the number on the screen and also the meeting ID that's associated with this uh, webinar. Uh, tonight is also very interactive, so please feel free to ask questions. Our, our CEO here is to be interacting with you all, and so is our director. So just a quick little note about how to ask questions. There is a Q&A portal on the bottom portion of your toolbar. You will see a Q&A button. Please use that button to ask your question. Uh, I don't recommend using the chat box. Uh, things tend to get very buried if you use the chat box pretty quickly, and so it's hard for us to keep track of those questions. You can also ask your question using a uh, verbally using the raise hand function of your your Zoom um, program. If you are joining us by phone, you can still ask a question by verbally by pressing star nine to raise your hand. Um, and then once I enable your microphone, star six. So if you're asking your question verbally, you have a raise hand icon on my end. I will see. I will enable your microphone, and you'll be able to unmute yourself. All right, I'm gonna pause my screen sharing here. I next want to introduce Director Richard Santos. Uh, Director Santos is um, serves on our Valley Board of Directors. He represents District 3, which includes Sunnyvale, North Santa Clara, Alviso, North San Jose and Berryessa, which is where I'm from, and Mopitas. Please welcome Director Richard Santos. Well, thank you, Albert, and good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight in this virtual meeting. Usually we all like to meet in person, but we have shifted to a virtual meetings to all keep us safe during the C-19 crisis. It's important that we stay connected, which is why we are having tonight's virtual meeting. This is an, also an opportunity for all of us to meet our new CEO, Rick Callender, uh, to the community. And he'll give you an update on all the projects and on whatever questions that you need to answer, Rick is there for us. So without further ado, our new CEO, very honored to introduce Rick Callender. Uh, thank you, Director Santos. Much appreciated and glad that folks are able to join us tonight, uh, both on Zoom Live as well as on Facebook. It's you know disappointing that we can't do these meetings live. I'm sure everybody understands, but I would have loved to be able to get out in the community and be able to um, be able to support the directors who are elected from these districts and talking to our mutual constituents about things that are going on in the, in the neighborhood. So at, at that, what we've done is this is a, is a new series. We wanted to be able to have the opportunity to, to go out and to talk to folks and talk about what's going on at Valley Water as well as have the, uh, give everyone the opportunity to meet the senior executive staff at the leadership, meaning my, myself. Um, this is going to be the first of seven virtual meetings. And what we've tried to do is break these meetings up into seven neighborhoods. And tonight, we've invited pretty much the Milpitas, Berryessa community, Northern San Jose a community. So for those of you that look at things by city council districts, that city council's districts three and fourth, uh, Santa Clara, north of the Union Pacific Railroad, and Sunnyvale, pretty much north of of the Central Expressway. So those are what we'll be talking about. If you're not from those neighborhoods, still welcome to join us as well as we'll have one in your neighborhood where we'll be talking about projects in, in your neighborhood. So with that, I, I wanna just talk about a few of the local projects uh, that we have going on. This includes the Guadalupe project around Tasman, the South San Francisco Bay Shoreline project, the Anderson Dam seismic retrofit project. You maybe even heard a little bit about that on KCBS today or on the news as of late the Coyote Creek Flood Protection Project, um, and as well as Measure S, which is on the ballot. And then I uh, touch into a few things. Uh, Measure S is actually our Safe Clean Water and Natural Flood Protection Program. Then I talk a little bit about um, some of the homeless issues, which we, we're hearing so much about around in the community around homeless and stuff. I'm gonna tie that into how Measure S ties into homeless so everyone uh, understand. So, so uh, kind of running into some of the projects that we'll be talking about, let's start, start with Anderson. Like I said, you may be aware of the Anderson Dam seismic retrofit, uh, seismic retrofit project. 
it's one of our board of directors and one of our Santa Clara Valley Water District of Valley Water's highest priorities. And just last week, we had a, a virtual meeting to inform the community about the upcoming activities as it relates to Anderson Reservoir and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. That's, I'll call it FERC. Uh, basically, they have a order compliance project. We call it the F uh, FC uh, FOCP project. And the compliance project is basically a dewatering that starts right around the corner from now. It's October 1st, and then we'll be constructing a tunnel, um, which is expected to be, begin in 2021 with full completion of the project by 2031. Now, the Anderson Dam, the FERC order compliance project, that's the FOCP, that includes the the uh, construction of a larger outlet tunnel that's capable of re uh, releasing flows more rapidly to help uh, Anderson keep Anderson Dam safe uh, at level at safe levels, especially until the dam is <laughs> retrofitted. The larger project includes a complete replacement of the dam that will basically bring back the dam to full capacity, as well as give us a chance to, to seismically retrofit it. Many of you may know or may not know, but the, the Anderson Dam, uh, years ago, we were able to, actually not years ago, but about 10 years ago, we determined that it was seismically unsafe. And so we started to go through the process of trying to figure out how do we fix it. As we've done more and more studies, uh, what we've been able to determine is that there was a lot more risk than what we thought, so hence, uh, partially part of the reason why FERC has said, hey, let's um, ensure that we have safety for the community. Let's move, uh, let's empty the dam, but we're gonna be moving this uh, as fast as, uh, moving this along as fast as possible in order to get this done. So some of the concerns that you may have about the, are to, the impact to our water supply with Anderson out of service. And one of the things I want everyone to understand is I want you to be assured that we do have adequate water supply for this year um, and Valley Water basically has a diverse water supply portfolio which includes groundwater imported water from both the state and the federal sources as well as recycled water and we have enough water stored in uh, what we call semi-tropic that's in the Kern County area to serve the needs of about 700,000 households of five for about a year. So we continue to explore other sources of water that come from outside the county um, as well as uh, as we see the changes in Anderson Reservoir. Um, I'm gonna move over to Coyote Creek. Some of you may have been around or may have seen the flooding that occurred in uh, Coyote Creek in 2017. You know, I, I live not only about a mile and a half from where the flooding had occurred. I grew up in this in this town, so I've seen a lot of it. It's not a town anymore, but I grew up, we, my family, we moved out here in 1976 when it was a town. Uh, so so we've, I, I've been here for a while. I attended local schools, so I have seen some of the flooding incidents that occurred not only in the Alviso area, but in the Coyote Creek, the Coyote Creek area um, multiple times, which has been a little bit you know, disappointing, but we're working to get that fixed. And to provide a level of uh, flood protection while the dam is being re reconstructed, the Coyote uh, Project, the Coyote Flood Protection Project has been developed divided into uh, two phases. One where we're looking at the, the FERC order compliance project, and then the other is the flood mitigation measures that we need to basically be able to protect the Akaiti Creek from basically the storm of 2017, which is actually the storm of record. Now, one of the things I have heard is a lot of folks have come to our board meetings and they have expressed not only the concern about being flooded, and I, and I can feel the pain, I can hear in their voices how devastating it was being, and I, and I understand. I, and I was able to go down there myself and be able to view it. And I'm truly sorry for what the folks have gone, have gone through. And I can promise you, it's unfortunate. It's very sad what folks have had to deal with um, due to flooding, as well as the long legal process that's following it. And as CEO, I want to reiterate that I want this process to end quickly and fairly. So we'll continue to move forward through this process, but I do want it to end quickly and fairly. And I want everyone that's in Valley Water's territory to be treated fairly, as well as uh, I want to make sure everyone knows that we're here to serve the entire community. And so many of you have um, kind of moving on to the next subject, and then I'm going to be opening up shortly. So, I, so as we talked about, you do have the Q&A box as well as, you know, I'd love to, uh, if you'd like to be able to speak live, we'll bring you in and have you speak live and welcome to turn on your camera and have an informal conversation. That's how we've tried to make this uh, throughout the community. Uh, so moving on to Measure S, you may have heard about Measure S. It's on the uh, on the ballot. You'll see it on your ballot for November 3. I call it Measure S for Safe Clean Water. In July, the Valley Border Board of Directors placed Measure S on the November ballot after a community extensive uh, after extensive community pro uh, 
um, input process. And so one of the things we did is we gathered feedback from more than 21,000 community members on what were their priorities of what they'd want to see from us. And so what we heard from the community is making sure that we were ensuring a safe, reliable water supply. They wanted to make sure that we're reducing toxins, hazards, and contaminants in our waterway. They wanted to make sure that we're protecting our water supply from earthquakes and natural disasters. We wanted to make sure we gave a lot of emphasis to restoring wildlife habitat and providing for open space, as well as for, for, for providing flood protections for homes, businesses, schools, and highways. And then one of the things that's different from our last program that was renewed by 74% of, of the voters was they wanted, uh, the voters wanted to make sure that we are supporting public health and public safety for our community. One of the things that we heard um, unsolicited was the comments about homelessness and how do we help dealing with homeless on the sides of our creeks. As many of you know, we, there's, a, there's a large homeless population in Santa Clara County. And one of the things that we have been engaged in is home and the, home, the removal of homeless encampments in conjunction with the cities and others. And I'll talk about that a little bit in a, in a little bit. But more specifically, Measure S is going to help us improve the reliability of our water supply and help prepare for natural disasters by, by providing funding for upgrades to outdated seismically unsafe pipelines and dams. It'll provide for reducing toxins and hazards, uh, protect our residents and businesses from threats post, uh, posed by uh, climate change. So it'd be making sure we're more prepared for things such as droughts, wildfires, sea level rises. But most importantly, and as a resident of Santa Clara County, Measure S does not increase taxes. What it does is it simply renews an existing parcel tax that voters approved in 2012. If you want to learn more about Measure S, I do encourage you to go to safecleanwater.org. Um, that's basically it's the Valley Water website. It's not a campaign website. It's just going to give you the simple facts about Measure S. I can tell you, me and my family will be voting for Measure S. And it's not because I'm CEO of this organization. It's because I care about this valley. And I want to make sure that we have the projects that are going to continue to provide for the protections of this valley. Lastly, I want to acknowledge again that we heard from many of you about the increases in homeless activity along Coyote Creek, Guadalupe River, and the other waterways that are within uh, Director Santos's district. This is something, this is a very, very challenging situation. We are trying to work with the county, the city, and others in, in terms of trying to address this. Several agencies that include Valley Water are working on programs and efforts aimed at addressing the homeless crisis, including housing, social services, trash removal. Um, one of the things that we're looking at right now is trying to enter into, it's, it's called Trash for Cash, which will pro uh, be providing those that are in the encampments. If they bring us a bag of trash, then we'll be able to to give them a little bit of cash for each bag. I believe it's $5 per bag, it may be $4 per bag that we're, that we're looking at. But we're trying to implement that in the San Jose area so that we can basically have the folks that, are, that we know are there to, to, um, to basically help us to take care of it. Part of the challenge of dealing with uh, homelessness in the COVID um, in the COVID times is just that, dealing with homeless in the COVID times and the fear of spreading um, not only COVID into those communities, but out of those communities. So one of the things is we're trying to figure out is what's the balance and what can we do in order to, to deal with this. The one positive thing I did, want to, I did want to point out about Measure S is Measure S also includes for millions of dollars for us to deal with homeless, but in a different way, in a more, humani in a more humanitarian way than we've dealt in past. In past, what we've done is we've just joined you know, the police and the crews and gone in and swept through those homeless encampments. And then what would happen is the homeless encampments would come right back after we cleaned up the areas. So what we've tried to do is make sure that we have dollars that will also provide for folks that in the social services to go out and join us and try to get the folks permanently out of the creeks and then be able to clean up and hopefully we don't see the repopulation of those encampments. So we have heard you. We are looking to do what we can do. And so at that, what I'm going to do is I just touched on a few things. I didn't just want to be able to talk at you tonight, but I wanted to be able to have a conversation together. So at that, I'm going to ask for Albert to go ahead and open up for questions and uh, get us started on the engagement and you'll have me and Director Santos here to answer questions. All right, great. Thank you, Rick. So right now we have a raised hand for Mercedes. Soria, I'm going to enable your microphone, Mercedes. Just give me one second here. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Can you hear me okay? We can, Mercedes. Hi, so my question is, uh, there's a world of development that is happening right now through the Anderson Dam. And my understanding is that the work that's 
gonna take there. It's going to be reversed if we go all the way. To I'm thinking about moving there. What kind of disturbances will the population of those houses experience while you do all of the reconstruction? So, uh, Mercedes, you broke up a little bit, and I think I caught what you were saying, but you were saying, and you know, hopefully I caught you right, but you're saying that you're going to be moving to the Borello houses next to the dam in the city of Morgan Hill, and you're kind of wondering what kind of disturbances would we expect um, as we are rebuilding the dam, et cetera. Did I catch that correctly? Yes, that was, that was it, yes. Okay, so so one of the things I'm not exactly familiar with exactly what the Borello houses are as it relates to Anderson. I'm assuming that those are the houses that right as you drive up to the um, to the uh, drive up to the face of the dam. Those are the ones kind of on the right hand side by the park. And, and if my assumption is wrong, let me know. But I, in and around that area, I think one of the things that you will be able to, you will be seeing is trucks that will be going up into that area. Um, I'm not sure when you'll be moving there. If you're moving there in the next few weeks, next few months, you may have, um, there's may, there may be fish that um, as we're emptying the dam that we'll be dealing with, that we'll be trying to remove. Um, but you will have some sound, you will have some noise, you will have trucks, you'll have typical construction traffic, which will be occurring. You shouldn't have anything if you're thinking about which, will, will it cause damage to, to my homes? No, you shouldn't be seeing anything like that, but you will have some, uh, the normal type of construction. Mercedes, does that answer your question? Uh, no, I'm, I'm looking for when they're actually rebuilding the dam. Uh, um, I wonder if that is a very noisy uh, process for us leaving because Borella is right there at the entrance of the state park, just right next to the dam. So, uh, oh, so you, I'm, I'm worried right about the thing. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm worried about the 10 years that this project will take. So uh, not necessarily in the next year or so when you're emptying the dam, that's, I'm not too worried about that. I'm talking about the 10 years yeah. of rebuilding it. So the 10 years of rebuilding, so there's gonna be different phases of the project. I'm not sure when you'll be moving down there. If you're moving down um, to the project as we're doing the for ordered compliance project, you will be able to hear some drilling because there will be some tunneling and some boring that will be occurring. It's not going to be, I think, things that will be um, unimaginable. You're not going to have like the hammering or pile driving uh, kind of effect from that, but you will have some of that. For the removal of the dam, there will be some impacts and there will be some noise. What I will do is if you can um, go ahead and if you send an email to CEO at valleywater.org, I'd like to connect you with um, the project manager so we can talk to you exactly about the kind of impacts that are expected. We haven't done the environmental impact reports completely yet, but, but, what, but what I do believe you will have is um, if you're thinking of like a large construction zone with you know, the removal of a dam um, with backhoes, et cetera, and if, where those homes are located are probably fairly close. So you will have some, no some noise and some sound, but it's not going to be one all year. It's not going to be 12 months of continuous uh, of continuous building for 10 years, that in case that's what you're worried about. But there will be there will be some noise, but I will like to connect you with the project manager. If you can shoot me an email, um, I'll make sure that we get that over to the project manager and meet with you um, directly. All right, great, thank you. Anything further, Mercedes? Go ahead, Mercedes. Yeah. I know, that's all I needed, thank you. I will reach out via email. Oh. All right, thank you, Mercedes. I look forward to getting your email. And thank you for joining us tonight. You're welcome to continue to hang on. If you think of any other questions, we're gonna, you know, we'll, we'll be done in uh, probably about 40 minutes, but I wanna make sure that we, we get your questions answered. If you have any others that come up, you know, don't hesitate to pop back in and ask again. All right, thank you, Rick. And thank you, Mercedes, for your question. Just as a reminder for our folks on Facebook Live, feel free to make a comment on Facebook and we'll relay your question over. Uh, also, raise your hand to ask your question verbally if you would like. We're now going to move on to a question from Kenita Watson. Uh, Kenita asks, uh, what effect, sorry, what effect will all this expenditure have on flood insurance rates? I'm assuming this may be related to projects or and or measure us. Yes. Yeah, so what effect will all this expenditure? So, um, so this could be based on, you could be asking two different things. You could be asking about the dam. Um, as it relates to the rebuilding of Anderson Dam, 
have on flood insurance rates and availability, or you could be asking about the Measure S and the flood protection projects and the availability. I don't know if you want to, um, if you want to uh, clarify in terms of exactly what you're looking for, but I'm going to I'm going to start with Measure S, which will have a more direct um, effects on your insurance rates. So what happens is if you're in the floodplain and you are at risk of flooding, the, the, you're basically paying through your, or not through your mortgage, but your mortgage, um, whoever you're paying your mortgage to will require you to basically have flood insurance on, on your home. Um, when you are removed from the floodplain or if there's a lesser degree of flooding that you will be subjected to, your flood insurance rates will go down. So the projects that are in Measure S, when they are removed from the floodplain or they have a lesser degree of flooding that they will be exposed to, they will see lower, they should see lower flood insurance rates. If you're talking about, and I didn't see any clarification, if you're talking about Anderson Dam and in, in, in terms of the impact on flood insurance rates, Anderson Dam, um, isn't the flood protection uh, project that you get for Coyote Creek. You see incidental flood benefits from Anderson Dam because what happens is that Anderson Dam captures a lot of the water that would have been flowing down uh, downstream, but it's not, it's not considered a flood protection dam, it's considered a water supply dam. So you will not see um, any flood insurance rates benefits from the fixing of Anderson Dam. So I'm hoping I may have addressed your, your question on both ends if you may. <laughs> If, if uh, in case that's what you meant. So I will look at Kanita uh, to, to basically do any follow-up if they have one or to raise their hand and we can bring you inside to ask the question live. Kanita, I have enabled your microphone in case you want to ask any follow-up questions. Feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, no, thank you. That was answered, answered my question. All right, thank you. So hopefully that's helpful. If it was a major S, I'll, I'll continue to tell all of our listeners and everyone out there, I hope that folks look at it favorably. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a matter of not only environmental justice um, in terms of making sure we provide flood protection, but for those, that, uh, for those folks I forgot to mention, there's also a senior exemption. So if you're a senior, a low income senior, uh, you will be exempt. You can apply for a permanent exemption uh, from the t uh, from the Measure S as well. So there's a lot of positives about Measure S, and that's why it passed. I think before I was 74 percent of the of the population voting for it. All right. Uh, for anyone on Facebook Live, feel free to ask your comments. Uh, anyone here, please feel free to submit your questions. I did see a thank you from Kenita via our Q and A portal. Thank you. All right, well, if we don't have any other things, one of the things I'll, I'll just kind of talk a little bit more about um, uh, Measure S and Safe Clean Water, um, since it's actually a pretty, a pretty big program. So right now, the way the rate is, and you'll see it on the ballot, it's 0 0.006 cents per square foot. So um, on average, so it depends on the size of your home, the smaller the home, the less you pay, the larger the home, the more you pay. Um, up to a quarter, uh, a quarter acre parcel. Um, not only does it provide for very strong environmental protections, protections for fisheries, um, not only the flood protection, but it also has community grants over the course of the first 15 years, you'd be looking at uh, $53.3 million, which will be rolling out into community grants um, in order to support nonprofits on um, things that support uh, wildlife habitat, environmental stewardship, um, support things such as uh, being able to bring programs that provide for water conservation. You know, additionally, um, one of the things that especially as we're in COVID right now, is you think of all these large capital projects that we're trying to roll out to the community, this is going to give our community a good chance and a good base of jobs in order to build this. And I'm not talking about inside Valley Water jobs, I'm talking about jobs of others that will be able to support us. So these are going to be the other companies that provide uh, the contractors, the um, the other uh, entities that need to support these kind of projects in the community. So it's a very good um, base of support. That's why if you look at Measure S, that's why you'll see very strong base of support, not only from the business community, not only from the farming community, not only from the Democrats, not only from um, environmental groups, not only from religious leaders that are out there, but a very broad base and spectrum of individuals and, and groups that are saying, 
yes, Measure S is what we need for right now. So again, if you have any questions on Measure S, I would uh, go to if you go to safecleanwater.org, or you're always welcome to send something in at CEO at valleywater.org, and we will provide you um, your factual information. We're not running the campaign. There is a, a campaign for Measure S. I'm here to just talk about the, the real benefits of Measure S and what it means for, for uh, Santa Clara County and for, for our community. Thank you, Rick. We have a question via Facebook Live. This is from Cherry SC. Are you placing more flood warning signal device and communications for the county, especially in areas that have flooded already in the past, including Coyote Creek? So I, I think um, if I understood you correctly, Albert, is are we putting more basically flood indicators that are out there? One of the things that we that we did do after 2017 is we have looked at um, some of the indicators that we have out in the creeks and the creek ways. So the answer is, I believe is yes, is that we have placed those out there, but looking and basically being able to determine where the, uh, where the water marks are and what's going on. If you go to our, actually go to our website, valleywater.org, you could actually be able to review the levels of where the, where the waterways are. So even in 2017, we were able to be able to review the, um, the levels of the waterways. And so what you're doing, and I think, and this is kind of probably a broader nature to the, to the question, the way, that I, the way that I describe it is, is I kind of describe it like a hurricane. When you see a hurricane is coming in on the East Coast, people don't wait till the hurricane gets there and say, whoa, this is a, this is a big hurricane, we need to evacuate. Generally, what you see is you see based off of basically the meteorology, they're saying, look, this is a class uh, X hurricane where it's going to create winds of X miles an hour and so we need to basically be prepared. So often what we do under our uh, emergency operations center, we, we do not issue the evacuation orders or wait for the, or for the water levels to be a certain height. What we do is we look at basically the meteorology, we look at the forecast, and then what we do is we try to provide that information to the cities from our emergency operations center. So you don't wanna wait till you see X amount of water in the waterways, you want to look at what are the projections that are going to come in and basically be able to provide that kind of information based off of the projections and what's in the, um, what's in the waterway. So that's a very long answer to say that basically, yes, we, we are doing that, but no, that's not the, uh, the, the way that you want to look at it. You want to look at it in a more holistic fashion. So if you have any follow-up questions from, uh, from the Facebook Live, I'd encourage you to go ahead and put back in another follow-up question. I'd love to answer it. All right, we're still uh, waiting any additional questions on Facebook Live. Right now, we seem to be uh, good on questions. Okay, so I'm going to look to Director Santos to see if, he, if there's any things that he wants to talk about. I know that we've done a lot of projects in the uh, Milpitas area, and we've had a lot of positive outcomes in the Milpitas area, as well as a lot of um, groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings. Is there any project in particular that that's one of your favorite ones that you'd like to talk about or one that sticks out in mind, Director Santos? Well, uh, <clears throat> CEO Calendar, you know, when we're talking about preparing for potential flooding, uh, I really like what you had to say. In addition to that, as you know, uh, you were there with us at the meetings with their city council, the city of San Jose, we sat down and we have a, a new action plan that is way more comprehensive than the past. We're working with the county closely. And so we take, or we always have, taking emergency flooding very seriously. And we're working diligently with our Valley Water District employees, the city of San Jose and the county together doing a even better job of being prepared. So, and God bless, we hope that the weather and there's no droughts, but we know that all these fires, we know that there's gonna be less vegetation. There's gonna be a lot of water flowing. And so you mentioned about the Milpitas, we've had several phone calls about what is our crews doing out in the different rivers from Berryessa to Penitentia to whatever. And we're out there, as you know, uh, every, every chance we get up to around November, when the habitat and endangered species, we have to stop doing maintenance work. But we're all preparing to get our easements and making sure the rivers are clean prior to potential rains. And uh, we rely on the public. It's like tonight's meeting. Please call in and make sure that our staff knows there's some trees falling or there's debris. And when CEO Kellner mentioned the homeless. We, that's why Measure S is so important. We're getting continued uh, more homeless and unfortunately in our rivers, they need housing. We're all working towards that. But right now we have a lot of folks living in our rivers and they contribute to a tremendous amount of trash and rubbish and so on. 
So our crews are working every time we get opportunity, especially lately here in the Milpitas area, getting prepared for, we hope, reasonable rains and we don't have any droughts. So it's a difficult time, but when you see our crews out there, that's what we're doing. We're maintaining the rivers and the creeks, getting prepared for rain and making sure we have flood prevention. So it's a tough job and uh, we encourage more questions for our CEO and our staff and myself. And my phone number is there, always available. We're always on the internet. Please, uh, if you're watching football tonight or you're busy doing something else, I understand it. But take the time to get on those websites and find out about Measure S and all the benefits that come with it because we want to do a great job for the residents. We all pay taxes and we all want to make sure that we're going to be safe. So let's all work together. Back to you, Rick. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Director Sanders, and I'm happy that you brought up debris because that does talk about another component of something that's different than what's in Measure S um, than what we've had in the past. One of the things that we've heard from the community is when we saw the flooding in the, not only was it in the Coyote area, but we saw it in the Morgan Hill area, mm -hmm. we saw the heavy, heavy rains of 2017. And everyone knows of climate change, we're going to see more inclement weather just like that. But one of the things that has occurred is that you have uh, Valley Water owns about one third of all of the waterway, all the creekways throughout Santa Clara County. The other one third uh, approximately are owned by cities, other municipalities, and the other one third is in private ownership. One of the things that when, when, when you saw the flooding that occurred in um, 2017, there was a, often there was a lot of finger pointing and saying, we saw down trees in this area along this side of the creek, Valley Water, why didn't you clean it up? City, why didn't you clean it up, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that we've done differently is we've tried to create a program that will allow for us, Valley Water, to basically work more in concert with the cities, the counties, as well as private residents. If they, anyone that applies to basically say, we have this down tree, we have this blockage, we have this debris that could be a flood obstruction. And rather than us saying, hey, that's on their property, they're responsible, this will allow us as uh, to basically to be able to go on with a grant and basically be able to address these things. People don't want to know who's got the fingers pointed at who. People just want to know that the job is going to get done. So Measure S does have that. So thank you, Director Santos, for bringing up the, uh, the portion about debris and some of the things that would be changing under, under Measure S. Um, uh, Albert, I'm look to you. Do we have any other questions out there? If not, I have a few other things I'd like to mention. Do we have one question via Facebook Live? There is a Cherry SC asks a follow up question. Um, this may be related to the, the fire, um, with recent wildfires we've experienced lately. So, her question or him, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, so, last time with the fire, our alert SCC was not working and we were confused whether to evac or not, while areas just two blocks away from our homes are getting evacuated. Can you please make sure to work with the county and the city to address this as it was very scary when the SCU fire was happening, especially in that first night. And I think this is related to when you're talking about evacuations earlier as well. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's an excellent question. The, the one thing, those of you that are um, online and um, if, um, uh, as well as in the Zoom live may not know, but Director Santos is a retired firefighter. I've never seen anybody that's worked on this board that has been more diligent about not only when we were seeing flooding incidences of driving around his own district and making sure that our EOC was aware of things and he didn't just rely on what the gauges said, uh, but looking at it, but as well as when we had the fires was directly involved in looking at to see what was going on. So I understand exactly um, what the resident is talking about in terms of the fear. Now, what they're probably talking about is the, um, the app and the app wasn't working and they weren't getting good information. We were also having some of the challenges. We were trying to work very closely with the, um, with the EOC um, and we were basically weren't getting information in it, um, as quickly as we'd like to. Um, this for the first time in the history of this agency, what we did see is one of our water treatment plants had to be evacuated. Um, that has never happened before, but because of the nature of the fires, um, we were being, uh, one of our plants was evacuated. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're always trying to make sure we are doing better and working better as it relates to um, emergency situations, fire and coordination. So the, the answer to the resident's uh, question is, even though we don't control the applicant, um, basically that application and the release of information, what we're gonna to try to do is make sure that we are closely coordinating. And if there's something that we can do to make sure that we're providing residents, at least 
um, as it relates to water supply, flood protection, et cetera, to make sure that the information is getting out in a timely and a quick fashion so that we don't have residents saying exactly what you said. I didn't get the information, I'm scared. We, we're gonna work to be, to be better because I think all of us have a little bit, um, and not just us as an agency, but all of the agencies um, can do a little bit better in, in making it happen. So that is my commitment to you that we'll continue to coordinate with them. We'll continue to run uh, exercises with these other agencies so that we can have lessons learned and be able to grow on those lessons learned to continue to get information out. Um, Director Santos, I know this is probably something that's true to your heart. You sit on um, the the uh, the emergency council for elected officials for Santa Clara County. You've been sitting on there probably for about well, at least five to seven years that I'm aware of. Did you have anything, any thoughts you wanted to add here? No, well, Rick, thank you. And I want the public to know that uh, even during this last fire, the uh, CEO Calder and his staff gave us fire briefings. I was aware of every step. And sometimes I know the public may think we're overzealous, but guess what? You're, you'd rather be safe than sorry. And so we had our emergency center opened up and we were given briefings. We have potential, as you know, earthquakes, flooding and fires. California is a beautiful place to live in, but we also have problems. And being, pre and being prepared, we are. And so thanks to Rick Callen and our staff, uh, I was on the phone and so was our other directors, getting an update to make sure that when you folks, our residents, our taxpayers, <clears throat> our constituents call in, we can have information to make sure that they're safe and have the latest information. So we're sure doing that. And being on the emergency council of Santa Clara County, I've been there, yeah, a long period of time and I enjoy our uh, quarterly meetings. And uh, we all, again, are all working together, all the different 15 cities, along with the county and the water district. You know, for years, the water district was not part of the emergency council. And uh, <clears throat> when I was chair back in around uh, 210, we made that happen. And they welcomed us because of our resources. We have water tanks. We have equipment that uh, Chief Calder had available for any city in the county in the city of San Jose during these fires. If they needed it, we were on and we have a water truck to bring them domestic water. <clears throat> so you can't do without water, folks. And uh, we were there ready to go and we're prepared at all times. So those are good points, Rick. And uh, the public, I just want to make sure you know, as a firefighter of 33 years, I have all the confidence in the world of our Valley Water District employees are being prepared to face all the challenges that are looking for, uh, that are facing us and we'll do a fine job. Thanks, Rick. And, and, and that is actually something that I did want to address. Actually, it's kind of funny that they pull it up because I, I just wanted to talk about, you know, that we are prepared for not only wildfires and power outages. One of the things and some of the questions that we'd heard um, uh, during last week's Anderson meeting is when we've emptied Anderson, um, is there going to be enough water supply? Because people have seen the helicopters dip the buckets into uh, Anderson in order to um, to fight fires. And the answer to that is yes. Even, even with um, Anderson out, um, empty, there will be enough, um, unfortunately, mud as well as um, water for the for firefighters to basically be able to address that. And we have nine other res um, reservoirs besides Anderson that are also available um, for, for fighting fires if, if need be. So um, for wildfires, power outages, we have the ability to, um, if we see the PSPS, um, I think it's PSPS in the fall, um, where, where PG&E shuts down uh, infrastructure. Yes, we get affected as well. We have enough um, emergency supply of gasoline and generators to last for between four and six days. And that's one of the things that we're also looking at is how do we make sure that we are um, prepared to even last longer? Because I think people have seen, you know, people never thought that we'd have fires like what we're having. People never thought that we'd have floods like we're having. Um, when's the last time folks saw rolling blackouts? It's been 20 plus years since we've saw rolling back out. So one of the things we need to make sure is that we are prepared and we're prepared for the, the residents of Santa Clara County to address any kind of emergency. I wanna make sure that we're, we're leading in a direction the board of directors wants to make sure we're continuing to lean into this um, versus to basically be mentally prepared. Let's be make sure we're prepared to basically address this and keep our water supply uh, uh, healthy and, and continuing to flow. All right, Rick, there's a, a comment on Facebook and I also have a question in the portal. I'm gonna go with the comment first. Uh, on Facebook Live, they uh, agree with Director Santos, so much trash generated by homeless within the creeks. Some of my neighbors and I just cleaned Penitentiary Creek this weekend within District 3. Um, the trash is so much and it needs to be removed, especially before rainy season. I'm assuming that this is related to the coastal cleanup and the clean up your happy place. And so they wanted to offer that to you. And I also did clean up this past weekend. It's a good opportunity to get outside where the air is clear and to get a good workout. Mm -hmm. 
Well, well, before you, before you go into that, I, first I want to thank whoever the resident is for, for going out. Yes, we do have coastal cleanup. We used to have the one day where we all amassed and, and did it. And this, uh, during COVID right now, we're saying every weekend is coastal cleanup. And we're trying to get folks to go out there. Um, if the resident can identify where they've cleaned up the trash, and hopefully they've alerted the crews um, in order to pick up the trash. But if they send something over to the CEO at valleywater.org, I'll make sure that our crews go out there and pick up the trash if they haven't already made the arrangements to do so. So I'm happy, Albert, that one, you are out there and doing your duty, your duty to, the, uh, to, the, to the creekways. But I, I also want to thank that resident for staying committed and, and going out there. And yes, we've seen it too. The trash is definitely um, piled up just because of COVID. You know, we're six months into COVID and we've been, um, and right now everyone's done the same thing in terms of kind of hands off social distancing and trying to figure out how do we deal um, with the encampments during the time of COVID. We will get, we will get there. We're still working on this with the counties and the cities. No, we're not perfect, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out and hopefully we can figure it out in, con, in conjunction with the residents of Santa Clara County. Um, Albert, did you say there was a question in there too? Yes, there was a question in our Q&A portal. This is from Frank L. He actually wants to know more about you. So Mr. Calendar, can you give us some perspective on your background and career history? Yeah, you, you know what, thank you. That was in my notes. I was supposed to go over that. So I, so I appreciate it, uh, Frank, for, uh, for asking the question. So I mentioned that me and my family moved out here in the mid seventies. You know, I, I'm actually a local guy. So I, I grew up in um, South San Jose, Blossom Valley Elementary, which is no longer there, but basically was part of the Oak Grove School District. Went to uh, Ber Bernal and Immediate, graduated from uh, Santa Teresa High School, attended Chico State. Um, industrial engineering and technology, went to San Jose State for a master's of public administration, and finished almost all of it, but, but I didn't finish my thesis and then um, got my law degree from Northwestern California University and a member of the bar. Uh, past work history is I started off from after college working with Ron Dellums uh, in Washington, DC, came back and worked on several campaigns, including um, uh, Kathleen Brown, which was the Governor, I was running for governor with basically Willie Brown's, I mean, not Willie Brown, excuse me, a Governor Brown, um, uh, Pat Brown's sister. Um, of course, you've never heard of her as governor because she did not win as governor. <laughs> so I went from there to working with Susan Hammer, worked on her staff, um, worked a little bit for ESSO, it was Economic and Social Opportunity, and been at Valley Water for the past 24 years and running into uh, 25 uh, very shortly here. Uh, came up through the public policy side. So I came up working for the state, local, federal government relations, ensuring that we were pulling in dollars. And so out of the out of the government relations efforts, we've been able to, over the course of working with the staff and others um, through our government relations, pull in uh, more than half a billion dollars in, uh, in dollars from the federal government and otherwise for Santa Clara County projects. Um, we're going to continue to stay committed in trying to stretch our Santa Clara County dollars as far as we can for those from like safe clean water. Um, but the one thing that you, you learn is that the federal government is not always reliable as it relates to you know, providing us uh, the dollars that they promise you. So sometimes you've got to pull back and do it on your own. Some of these projects in safe clean water, we've basically, rather than continue to rely on the federal government, we'll have to take care and finance locally. Um, but we're still going to try to figure out what, how do we get every dollar uh, from everywhere that we can. And so that has a lot to do with my background and making sure we're chasing things. So hopefully that, that answers the question. I appreciate the question. It was something I was supposed to touch. Thank you, Rick. Uh, looks like we're, we're set on Facebook Live questions in the Q&A portal. Okay. Well, one of, one of the other things, and, and, and I did again, want to just, just point people to Safe Clean Water if you have any, any questions there. Hopefully that answers all your questions. There's a very long book that talks about all the projects that are there. It's very specific. You can see it's not, a, it's not dollars that are just going to go anywhere and everywhere, but it's gonna go directly towards community benefit. I also invite everybody to build, uh, visit our valleywater.org uh, website. One, one of the things that um, we put up early on during COVID was at the very top of our website, we have an alert to kind of talk about some of the things that we're doing during COVID. Right now, our alert talks about that we're monitoring from wildfires, but one of the things very early in COVID, if everyone can recall, not only 
were people running to grab toilet tissue and to grab paper products, but they were also picking up pallets and pallets of water. And so when we saw that they were picking up pallets and pallets of water, what we did is we put out information, letting everyone know that your water supply is going to continue to be um, safe, it's going to continue to flow. And I think after a while people started listening to us or maybe people just figured out that, you know, there is no reason uh, during COVID to have to make a run on bottled water uh, because, you know, right here locally, we have a healthy, safe and clean drinking water supply. And I think that's primarily because of things like safe, clean water, primarily because we have people like Director Santos and good elected officials that are not only looking out for your water supply, but also for the environment. Um, so I think we have a, a good set of directors that are very strong environmental justice leaders, as well as very strong environmental leaders that understand how to balance making sure that we're utilizing the public trust in a good fashion and then enabling the staff to basically be able to move things move things along as expected by the community. Great, thank you. Uh, Albert, do we... Oh, we do have a, a, follow, a question on Facebook Live. This comes from Layla or Lila. Uh, is there a plan to clean up debris from Coyote Creek, even in reaches that do belong to the district before water is released from Anderson Dam? Oh, that is a really good question. So water is going to start being released from Anderson Dam um, pretty much October 1. So that is right around, that's what, two weeks away from now. So in terms of looking at debris, one of the things that we are trying to do is making sure that the water that we're releasing from Anderson Dam for the FERC ordered compliance project, which I talked about earlier, one of the things that we're doing is making sure that any of the water releases um, ultimately uh, will not cause flooding. So we, we're actively working to ensure that there won't be flooding. If there is any large debris that we are aware of that as a result of um, some of, of the releases, we would go and we would address that. I can tell you we would not negligently just release water and cause damage, um, damage and flooding downstream. So we, we don't have an active plan to basically, I, I know that the staff has gone and looked and has evaluated um, areas of Coyote Creek because we would not induce flooding. Um, but in terms of what I kind of tightened and tying this back into to Measure S, this is what exactly what I was talking about. The areas that we don't own, Measure S will allow us, if, if it passes, to basically be able to say that now we have the, we have the capability to not only go on the to go on other properties, but it would provide funding to do exactly what I believe the resident um, was asking about. So the answer is not exactly are we going to go and make sure that we're clearing, clearing out everything, but yes, we will be looking to make sure that there's no down, um, no down trees or blockages which would induce flooding as a result of the FERC order compliance project or any other, um, or any other releases that we will be doing uh, from Anderson. So hopefully, um, Albert, did I address the components of that question, do you believe? Uh, yes, yes, you did. Okay. And so if there's any follow up question that that uh, person had, I didn't catch their name. I would um, I'd be happy for them to enter in additional information. All right. As of right now, we're pretty set on Facebook Live questions and both the Zoom questions as well. Okay. Well, Director Santos, I was going to say, if we don't have any other questions, I don't want to just hold folks here to hold them here. Um, I think we've covered a lot of things, and I, and I do want to uh, thank everybody that you know came out tonight. I know there's other things you could be doing. You could be watching the Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> Since they're no longer the Oakland Raiders, you can be watching the Las Vegas Raiders, but I'm happy that you came here to spend the time with us. Get a little bit to know about me, a little bit to know about my leadership um, style, at least uh, at Valley Water. You know, again, you have the CEO at valleywater.org email if you'd like to send anything, um, uh, any questions, any follow-up that I didn't cover, um, please feel free. We're going to be doing six more of these throughout Santa Clara County. Um, the next one, and I'm going to look to Micro Albert because I don't have actually the date it's, of uh, Friday the 25th, which is this week, and it'll be the same time, 5:30. Uh, same time, and what area were, are we going to be? Uh, District Five for Director Shway or Chair Shway. So that is the Cupertino area. I don't know if know. so. It's the Cupertino um, area, a little bit of Sunnyvale. Um, so uh, they don't have the same kind of flooding problems that we've had. Um, over in this, but they have a whole set of other issues that you may want to may want to hear about if you'd like to join us. So with that, I'm gonna look to you, Director Santos, to see if you have any closing comments, and then I'll just follow up, follow up with the final thank you. Well, thank you, um, CEO Calder. Another, another fine job. First of all, I want to thank the staff, and your staff, and yourself for the, just another real fine job. And to all the residents who allow us to come in their homes during this dinner and 
of course, the Raiders time. I know uh, we can do other things, but thank you for listening to us. And I want to tell you that, that water district employees, we're all up for the challenges. Just like today, I went and got my flu shot. Folks, get your C-19 test, get your flu shots, mask up, get yourselves, wash your hands. Let's make sure we're all here to enjoy these benefits and measure S that's coming up. And uh, again, thank you for listening. Go to the websites and learn more about us. You can, like Rick said, you can call us anytime. We love our volunteers, Rector, and Coastal Cleanup and our volunteers are continually out there in the creeks and the communities cleaning up. We'll help out to remove that trash. Like Rick said, just give us a call. But anyway, folks, God bless you and thank you all. All right, and thank you, Director Santos. Just another reminder, um, any questions that you think you've like, oh yeah, I wish I'd asked that, go ahead and email me at CEO at Valley Water. Dot org. Uh, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you at uh, some of the future meetings that are coming up. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you again for bringing us into your home. And thank you to all the staff for putting this together. Couldn't do this obviously without the staff. All right. Thank you all. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks.